After an offseason of change, the Raptors have some major questions they need to answer about themselves this season, and in this video, I'm going to give you the three biggest ones to consider. Let's get into it. Well, we're heading into the 2024-2025 NBA season with a new look Raptors team, a new look as far as the personnel is concerned, and a new look as far as the approach is concerned. We're not going into this season with huge aspirations of wanting or needing to make the playoffs in order to fill those expectations. We are heading into a season where it's been clearly identified as a rebuild. If you don't believe me, just ask Raptors head coach Dark Ryakovich, and I'm sure Masai Ujiri behind the scenes is saying sort of the same thing. It's very nice. They've embraced this. Fans have recognized that we really need to reconstruct what we have here and really rebuild what we have here, rebuild the foundation that won that 2019 NBA championship. We've really started a new era here. But at the start of a new era, you have a lot of questions about yourself. You need to figure yourselves out to see what you have, who you are, and where you are going in the future. Over the course of today's video, we're going to be going through three specific things we want to have answered about the Raptors over the course of this season to better set this team up for the future. We're covering it all today here on Amateur Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in live streams and videos just like this. Smash that like button if you did enjoy this video along the way and subscribe for more content for the rest of the offseason and beyond. The first thing that we want to see this season, the biggest thing, we're going to start with the biggest thing. I'm not going to leave you hanging until the end of the video. The biggest question that should be on the minds of Raptors fans going into this season is can Scotty Barnes be that number one guy for the team? I've seen this debated many times throughout the comment section. I've seen this debated many times on social media, all over. Wherever those Raptors fans, conversations are going on about Scotty Barnes as the first option. And I think a lot of the loud minority is that he cannot be that first option. He cannot be that number one guy for a so-called championship team. But for me, he's just turned 23. He's coming off of an all-star season in his third NBA season when he was 22 years old. Why not? Why can he not be that guy? I'm not saying that he's there yet. And we have had very limited evidence of him in that role last season after the Pascal Siakam trade. It firmly became Scotty Barnes' team. It firmly became Scotty Barnes as the focal point and the main piece of this team. And quite honestly, after Siakam left in the brief time that we had with a new team, with a rebuilding team before Scotty Barnes got injured, albeit, wasn't the greatest. We didn't get the greatest showcase of Scotty Barnes and his ability. It wasn't the same showcase we got near the start of the season where Barnes wasn't the focal point of the team with Siakam still here, with other players, other big players like OG and Nobi still here. But he was more so willing himself into that top role for the team. We didn't really get that as maybe defense just started to focus on him, as maybe fatigue from the season started to settle in a little bit. But I'm not going to count him out based on that. There was, like I said... So many different variables going into that. A new group of players around him, injuries happening. I mean, morale, the Raptors were losing. They didn't want to be losing as much as they were. Then they ended up losing on purpose. The whole situation wasn't built for him really to succeed. But I think this season, we're going in full steam ahead with the awareness that Barnes, you got to be that focal point. You know, maybe on offense, you lean a bit more heavily onto RJ Barrett, but Things are going to be ticking absolutely through Scotty Barnes. The more touches for him, the merrier as far as his development is going to be concerned. So going into this season, as far as can Scotty Barnes be the number one guy, I feel like when I run into people and talk of, about the Raptors in public, this is like so, sometimes a question that does come up. Can Scotty Barnes be that number one guy? My answer is I don't know. I don't know if he can be that guy, but I certainly believe he has the potential to do so. So while we're entering this rebuild phase, you've got a special talent clearly here in Scotty Barnes, who, again, I think is fully capable of being able to do that. Why not test it out? Why not see what he can do when he's thrusted into that role? We're going to have a full season of this as an example of proof of potentially what he could do. And I'm not saying this season needs to just emerge as that number one guy and confirm it this season, but can we start to see those signs this season? That's absolutely what I'm going to be looking for with the player. Full steam ahead. I have so much belief in the player. Let's just see how far he can take this team and give him all the tools to do it this season, as I said. The second thing that we want to have answered going into this season, and I think this is a very large thing as well, a close second to the first point we had about Scotty Barnes. The second point is... 
is Dark Ryakovich, the right head coach for this team. I was pretty excited going into his rookie season as a head coach in the NBA, but I was quickly turned around on those thoughts for Darko. I understand that obviously there was poor roster construction with the team. I understand they were rebuilding in the end, but they also went into the season with playoff aspirations. They also had a pretty damn good roster to start the season. You know, not like a top six roster, but one that definitely underperformed compared to expectations. And I think the big thing about Dark Ryakovich is, you know, I'm okay with maybe the team underperforming a little bit. You know, I've come to grips with that. But the manner in which it happened, I just feel like Dark Ryakovich has very much struggled to adapt to reading games on the fly, making those adjustments on the fly. It feels like going into some games where you see a mismatch, where you see some sort of preparation that should have been there based on the opponent that the Raptors are playing. It feels like a lot of the time the Raptors go into some of the games where you're just confused. Like, what were they thinking? As far as the game plan is concerned, what were they actually thinking? I, I, I ask myself that. We do live stream watch parties for pretty much every Raptors game, and I'm sat in the middle of the first quarter sometimes thinking, what was the preparation? What was the game plan? Because it feels like there wasn't any. You know, leaving really good three-point shooters open by doubling off them, not attacking a specific mismatch where the Raptors are going to gain an advantage on offense. These sorts of little things were not happening. And if this, those adjustments did happen, maybe at halftime, it was just because they were so obvious that he could not miss them. So I'm a little bit concerned in those areas. It's very clear that Darko as a person, like he is a great man manager. His man management is outstanding. It's it's obvious. The players seem to take a great liking to him. And, you know, as a coach, that's sometimes half the battle. So he has that down. You know, we we've seen with his previous teams, the previous players he's coached. They all have glowing reviews for Dark Ryakovich. They all want to talk to him when he's in town or when they're visiting Toronto. But we need to see more from an on-court product standpoint. So results-wise, I'm not ultimately concerned this season. I think that this season could go a little bit astray for the Raps, especially if they're off the pace of the play-in tournament and they feel as though they can get a maximized draft pick if they start to lose a little bit of extra games, if you know what I'm saying. But for Dark Ryakovich, you know, I don't need to see him emerge as this outstanding coach this season. I need to see progress. I need to see something that I can believe in going forward because this is a pivotal era for the Raptors here of development. Dark Ryakovich, when he was brought in, was branded as this development-minded coach for a rebuild. Should have maybe committed to that rebuild a little bit earlier. But now I think that he's in a much better element for himself to succeed. He has the players he wants to succeed with and maybe fit his play style a little bit more. So the excuses are out the window here. I just need to see something that suggests this is the coach that we can believe in this season for me to get any sort of confidence in the coach because a lot of it was lost that season. And I recognize I may be in the minority with that sort of opinion, but we need to see progress this season in order to keep Dark Ryakovich, in my opinion, for the long term. But let's move on to the third point that we have here. And for this one, perhaps not the biggest one, but it's certainly something that I did want to discuss here. And the discussion is going to be around Grady Dick. What sort of role can the Raptors expect out of him? It was an up and down season for Grady Dick. It was mostly down, 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 and then upward, upward, upward trajectory all the way to the end of the season. It wasn't up and down. It was down, then it was up. We had a great end of the season of Grady Dick, which does bode well for potentially what he can do in the upcoming season. Now, we've talked about the depth and where Grady Dick fits into that as far as the rotation is concerned. We've talked about it on this channel. We've talked about it as well with the streams on this channel. Grady Dick, in my opinion, needs to be the starting shooting guard. He needs to be the fifth starter for this team. You have Emmanuel Quickly at point guard, Barrett and Barnes somewhere on the wings, Jakob Pertl as the center. Grady Dick needs to be that fifth man. If you're going to be rebuilding, you want to have more play time for Grady Dick to get more development reps. Also, if Grady Dick is a part of this core going forward, and potentially he is, you want to get him those minutes with those core guys like Barrett, Barnes, and Quickly to improve with them. And on top of that, you want to give those core guys the extra floor space that Grady Dick absolutely provides. But Grady Dick, not sure if he'll be a starter. I think he should be. Darko may go with Bruce Brown instead of him at the start of the season. We shall see. But regardless of what Grady Dick's role is, it's going to be pretty sizable. Whether that's coming off the bench early, whether that be starting for the team, we need to get some sort of evidence of what we can rely on for Grady Dick going forward. 
is he going to lock down that fifth man starter role? Because eventually Bruce Brown won't be here, and that will be the time absolutely for Grady to come in and seize that role. Is he going to showcase enough to prove that that's his spot? The final starting spot is going to be his, and hopefully it's going to be his for years to come as well, heading into his second NBA season. What he's going to have to do to be able to achieve that, we saw the consistency there with three-pointers last season. It started to come at the end of the season. I think like he still shot the ball percentage-wise very good on the season as a whole. So now that he's heading into a season where he already knows the range, he already knows the physicality, we could see those numbers bump up quite to a significant degree. Always been great at making decisions, always been great at attacking closeouts. Where we need to see a little bit of growth is in the defensive department. Is he going to be a liability there that just makes it really difficult to have him on the floor? We'll see what sort of strides he's made in those areas. But there needs to be, I think, some sort of definitive evidence that we can bank on for this guy to be part of the core. You know, we always talk about the core, the BBQ, Barnes Bear Quickly. Can we start to add in Grady Dick as the fourth member of the core going forward? I kind of want to already start that, but a good season out of Grady Dick will go a long way to convincing the rest of the fan base of that notion. So those are the three things that I have for this season that I'm most looking for, and I think you should be as well. Is Barnes showing signs of being the number one guy? Is Darko the right head coach for this team? And is Grady Dick a part of the foundational core for the future? We shall see over the course of the 82 games. We're going to cover all those 82 games and more right here on Amateur Hour Sports. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. For more Raptors content like this, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again next time.